Hello dear friends, today I'd like to talk a little bit about my YouTube performances. I chose 12 videos to talk about and uh, they're arranged in chronological order and numbered from 1 to 12. And I'm going to talk about uh, the history behind them and some anecdotes and things like that, if it's of interest to you. So the very first video is where I'm playing Chardash uh, by Monty with my father. I'm just 11 years old in this video, just turned 11. And this was my second performance, um, second annual performance in Minsk, Belarus. And this was televised. Uh, the first performance the year prior was uh, pretty successful. So um, next time I had TV um, crew uh, filming the whole thing. And my father, um, was both an accompanist at the end we played Entre dos Aguas, Chardash and Tico Tico together and uh, he also was talking about flamenco and each form that I then presented so what I remember about this video is that I had no nails and it was very difficult for me to play and that was the story of my life because I was still using my real nails I was playing guitar by Georgi Babichev, a wonderful Russian guitar maker. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He passed away in early 2000s. Uh, it was a specially made guitar for me that was smaller. So the second video uh, is of me playing a Bulerias by Sabikas. <clears throat> that was filmed in Hague in Holland in 1991. So what's remarkable about this is that it's just days after the um, August coup in, um, in Russia, in Soviet Union. Uh, so things were unstable and I went to Holland and I wasn't sure if I could come back because um, there was such instability in Russia at the time. What I remember is that I was overwhelmed. That was my first trip abroad, uh, I mean to the Western country. Um, and I was overwhelmed by what I saw. It was a completely different world. And um, I was so distracted, I hardly practiced. Um, and I don't think that I played very well that particular time. But I had many concerts at the time, so I didn't, um, I didn't feel that it was the end of the world. But what's very remarkable about that particular uh, video that particular time um, is that that's the first time that Paco de Lucia saw me play uh, because this was a competition organized by UNICEF um, it was called Denny K International Children's Awards and um, there was another flamenco guitarist there a wonderful guitarist whose name is Raito and um, Paco de Lucia was hoping that he would do well in this competition which Raito didn't that time. I got to the finals and he didn't. And um, however, the next time around, I think Raito did very, very well. Um, and Paco de Lucia saw me on TV for the first time uh, where I was performing these bulerias. And when I met with Paco, he mentioned it, that he already saw me. So the next video is called Spanish Guitar and this is my heavy hitter. <laughs> on YouTube because uh, it had over 2 million views so far. When YouTube was very young, this was one of the first uh, flamenco guitar videos on it, so it was very popular. Um, it was recorded in 1997 uh, in winter. I immigrated at the end of 95, so I've been in the United States only for over a year, just over a year. And um, it was the time where, when my father visited me. And um, I remember it was very cold and uh, this was uh, at a local cable TV station. Uh, so I was wearing a sweater because I didn't have um, concert clothes yet uh, in the United States because I left with almost nothing and uh, 
I survived by playing house concerts. So playing on TV, I didn't have any special clothes. So the old lady that you see in the video is not my grandmother. She was the host from the station. She was very, very nice. Uh, now, the fourth video is um, Oration by Manolo Sanlúcar. So that concert was interesting because I was studying at the conservatory at the time and uh, I, I took a class called Career Skills. It was a required, required class. And uh, one of our assignments was to organize ourselves a concert um, and create a program and write program notes and things like that. So I organized this concert myself and I played it at um, the Natick, um, what was it called? Amazing Things Art Center in Nat Natick. Um, I remember it was um, a concert where I played the most modern pieces at the time, including um, including Mi Nino Curro by Paco de Lucia, which I rarely played. Otherwise, um, also I played Calejón del Muro, I think, the Minera by Paco. And uh, the, it's the only concert when I played uh, Tio Sabas, Tarantas by Paco de Lucia. So that was that. And I was playing a guitar by Georgi Babichev again, and it had very nice raspy sound. But it was a classical instrument. I just lowered the strings uh, to make it sound like flamenco. So the next video is uh, number five, Guajira by Paco de Lucia. So that Guajira was recorded at the conservatory. I remember that my father purchased a pretty nice camera at the time and I used it to record myself and also my classmates, guitarists, um, to help them with their career. So we recorded some promotional materials. So I took this camera to, to the school and we all took turns recording and I remember that I was very upset with my playing um, because I just, I was too fatigued and I also had a ping pong ball in place of my thumbnail. So I couldn't record a good take for several times. There was always just one one thing that wasn't good about it. So, so I look a little bit uh, upset and tired in that video. Uh, the sound was not so good because I didn't use external microphone in the camera and the camera was far away. All right, next video number six. Okay, this one is, is fun. So one day I woke up and I felt like I had a sore throat and when I tried speaking I heard that my voice was really really deep and I tested it uh, by singing the lowest note and I got down to B flat I was pretty resonant and I thought wow what can I how can I capture this this is very cool and I thought well wh why don't I record the video and um, I was thinking what would be the topic okay so I can talk about scales and I didn't even bother with my nails because I, I had none at the time um, I was using acrylic nails and um, my acrylic flew off and I had to build the extensions so I recorded anyway uh, without nails and that's why my uh, my voice sounds like Dracula you know <laughs> very low my friends at the school were teasing me afterwards and they would they would always say uh, something like how come because that's what I say it's like why um, so that was a pretty fun one now next video is flight of the bumblebee where I play with my friend Jerome Muff so um, Jerome came to the States uh, in the late 2000s where he applied for a doctoral musical arts degree program um, program 
and uh, I had a friend who who basically hosted Jerome and this friend Steve Lin a great guitarist by the way uh, he called me and he said you know you have to come over and uh, hear this guy play he is phenomenal and of course I came over and that's how I met Jerome he was a fantastic guy very fun to to be with um, and he played for me um, Caprice number no. five by Paganini uh, at amazing speed and I was very impressed because I also was playing that piece and I I thought that I couldn't play as well as him so I played um, Flight of the Bumblebee for him uh, I played it with both uh, two fingers and uh, tremolo four fingers uh, and he was very impressed and you know I got this idea from this guitarist called um, his name is Alexander Vinagrad. He plays a eight-string guitar, and I discovered him many years ago. And uh, I stole that idea of using tremolo for "Flight of the Bumblebee" from him, and made an arrangement. And then, uh, because Jerome was so enthusiastic about this, I taught him um, my my arrangement. So I taught him the first guitar, and he said, "I'm gonna make the second guitar." So he arranged the second guitar, and that's uh, that's what we play here. This concert took place in 2012 in Austin, Texas, a fantastic city for guitar. So the next video, number eight, is my concert in Belgrade. Uh, that was in 2013. So the history behind this is I had a concert in Russia in Moscow at the Tchaikovsky Hall as part of the Guitar Virt Virtuosos uh, Festival and I remember that I I always fly out um, maybe two days before I have to play so that I can acclimatize a little bit uh, and that's what I did here and uh, my connection was in Frankfurt Germany and I remember as soon as I landed in Frankfurt um, it started snowing and uh, they basically locked the locked down the airport and I couldn't fly out until the next day so I had a sleepless sleepless night and I was just in time for the concert so I I had to run to the hotel um, qu quickly shower iron and go on stage um, and the whole trip was just very hectic and uh, very busy so I also had to perform in Belgrade at a festival and I remember after being so exhausted I got there with maybe two hours of sleep and uh, I didn't have food the whole day because I was panicking I was working on my nails at the hotel and I was so tired I thought how am I going to play a concert now because I'm already so so totally exhausted I was done and when I got to um, the concert place and started warming up, I stopped worrying because I was too tired to worry. And when I stopped worrying, I, f I saw that I was improving, actually. I played better and I played more musical. And that inspired me. Just hearing myself uh, playing play musically inspired me to to play better and I remember I, I, I got like a second wind and my um, my energy spiked um, I went into survival mode I guess and just before the concert I was really peaking uh, with this energy I remember I was just pacing you know pacing before I had to go on stage uh, I just couldn't contain my myself so that that concert was full of energy probably one of the most energetic performance um, that one of the most energetic energetic performances that i've ever done ever had and uh, some of the great guitarists were in the audience um, like aniello desiderio and um, costas Cassiolis and uh, many more so that also gave me a boost of uh, adrenaline playing in front of them but um, they liked it and we became friends so the next performance is um, a fandango 
actually the next two performances um, together. So it's a Fandango Mantinu by Paco de Lucia at a 2015 uh, festival in Moscow. So in, again, Tchaikovsky Hall. So I remember that I proposed five pieces um, um, to, to the organizers, uh, five new pieces that I haven't learned yet. And I got busy with my other concerts and found myself not not knowing these pieces about a month and a half before. So I panicked and I started r learning really hard, <laughs> really fast. So the pieces were also really difficult. It was Solea by Vicente Amigo. It was um, Bulerias Rio de la Miel uh, by Paco. It was Montinho. It was also um, Zapateado by Juan Manuel Canizares. Uh, great Zapateado, very difficult, and uh, a Minera by Rafael Riqueni. So, uh, the video number 10 is something that I recorded for myself, and the date for that video is, I think, March 13th, or something like this. Um, it was the first day <laughs> when I could play this this fandango i just learned it and uh, it was it was the first day that i could play it from beginning to the end without uh, forgetting something so that was uh, that was re very interesting by the way this video was unlisted on my channel and um, um, a few months ago youtube changed policy so i think it went into private so it, it was set to private and I'm not sure if you can ac access it. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you can, because not being signed in, I couldn't open it. Um, let me know. So that was just me trying it out uh, with pretty bad camera in my room um, before the concert. And it was 12 days before my performance, which was March 25th. And I was playing um, my Devo Negra uh, guitar was sounding so so good, but it was winter and uh, it was super dry in Boston. Uh, it was like in sin single digits, uh, humidity was in si single digits in the room, and I didn't have a humidifier and I developed a tiny tiny crack right next to the fretboard, which I repaired just before. Uh, so I didn't have my guitar um, for a couple of days uh, prior to this. So it was uh, pretty stressful for me to <laughs> to record that. I mean, to play that on stage uh, at such in such a wonderful hall. So number eleven, uh, flamenco guitar with Grisha Gorishev. So this is my Boston concert uh, at a festival. So again, I was very ambitious uh, with my program because uh, I think it was called the Spirit of Improvisation, and. Um, I I decided to include some of the most modern pieces from my repertoire. So, and of course, I had other concerts and engagements, and I found myself not practicing this. Uh, like three three weeks before the concert, I still haven't started practicing these pieces, <laughs> which was uh, which is a bad advice for anyone. And what's remarkable about this, this concert is I pushed myself to the limit um, practicing these pieces. And uh, I had a lot of really uh, wonderful musicians in the audience, including Maestro Leo Brauer. Um, and uh, it really, really pushed me. I remember it was very humid um, and, and hot, and I was sweating a lot. So this this is um, when I just got this this guitar. This is my um, satin wood Lester Devo. So it sounded a little bit too raspy in that concert because the strings were lower and the guitar was very new and plus it was very very hot and humid. So that that was an interesting interesting concert. I ended up not liking how I played, so I kept including this 
program in my concerts afterwards to give myself a second chance <laughs> to, to perform this better and I eventually did and uh, the last video is um, me playing Almaraima um, on a wonderful guitar by Pepe Romero Jr. Uh, that was at the GSI Guitar Salon International um, so here I, I went straight to Los Angeles from um, from the Bay Area so it took me about five and a half hours uh, to get there and I knew that I had to record pretty pretty soon so I just had time for food and when I when I got to to guitar salon I I met with Pepe Romero so Pepe Romero was there and we have a little history um, so in 1994 I was in France in Colmar and um, Pepe Romero was performing there as well uh, it was a huge festival um, 100 years of Segovia 100 Segovia and uh, Pepe Romero uh, saved me uh, by offering to you know to, to glue an artificial nail on my finger because I had no nails I played with my own nails and the, the more I practice the worse my nails became and uh, I completely lost my uh, middle finger nail I think uh, and Pepe Romero uh, took his time to to go to the drugstore and uh, to, to buy the nail kit to glue it on my finger show me how to how to how to glue it on so uh, this time was the the first time that I saw uh, Pepe Romero after that uh, 1994 uh, meeting with him so um, as I was playing Salma Raima on, the, on on Pepe Romero Jr's guitar uh, Maestro Romero was sitting right in front of me <laughs> and uh, I knew that he was uh, so into flamenco when he was younger uh, he was a friend of Sabicas and Paco and uh, playing in front of him gave me an extra boost of energy so I thought that I played uh, pretty well on, on this guitar and in spite of me being really tired so here are a few stories I hope that you didn't get too bored <laughs> listening to these uh, if you like this kind of uh, video maybe I'll record something else I have a lot of obscure videos uh, on the internet, on, on YouTube, that nobody watches, nobody knows they exist. So I can include links to them next time and talk a little bit about those. So I'll see you next time. Thank you, friends.